series. Um, I'm in my number and this is. This is Nikki. All right, and we have a special guest today, um, Dr. Matthews. And this is the first video in a series of video where we're going to look at the journey throughout men's school to get persons to give their opinions on how it works for them and just give advice to the year group below them. All right, so yeah, basically that's what the series will be doing. Right, and if you're not yet a subscriber, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below right there. Yes, and <laughs> so as Damari said, we have Dr. Matthews here today and we're going to just bother, bother him with a lot of questions and just hear his experience through med school. So let's start with our first question for you, sir. We just want you to introduce yourself. Tell us about yourself and, uh, you know, yeah. Okay, as I said, I'm Dr. Rico Matthew. Um, I'm 77 years old, actually working at the University of so, and a part of the to get some therapy later. I grew up on the garden that downtown Kingston, and I went to the high school, that almost. Okay, so I went to Calabar uh, for high school and sixth form. And then I started medical school to do a bit of stuff. I like to play rugby, that's my hobby. Um, most people don't really do the mirror of but that is not <laughs> I get less damage in rugby than I get in football, so I feel that's my favorite. And I get to play rugby at UWI and at the international level. I play for Jamaica um, at the international level. So I was saying that um, Calabar is known for a track, so why do you um, think about the tracks? Are you going to run? Well, that's a good question, you know. Uh, I never did any sport until I was in the lower six, right? I think I, I can't leave Calabar without doing that sport. And the first thing I actually tried out for was a field event, which was a long term. But I was there training, 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 training. And up to after a month, I still never get to do any something. Like, it's done it. I switched from that because it was a pure training, um, strength training, physical training, and move on to rugby. Because I'm going to the rugby. And then I get to play, and it's easier to make the team, and actually get to love it. So that's why. I was actually can rugby because that was my main area in rugby. I played on the week. And Definitely, I was able to run fast, but that's what I'm doing. So much of physical work and preparing the best for them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the next question, next question now was being a doctor your dream occupation growing up as a child? Is this something you always wanted to do? I know there's a lot of people who say like I want to be a doctor from their primary school, high school, but that wasn't me, right? Growing up in primary school, I want to be a lawyer. I right? was like two different in that respect. And I want to be a lawyer. Just because one, I like that. I like to read at that time. And one of my cousins, the older cousin, all of them want him to he want me to be a lawyer. And I was actually held in from that and to be high school. Um how did I get to want to do Medical. This actually was you know, my choice. It was more of, of my chemistry teacher. So I did take I did this, this and I did science. And I wanted to do medicine. I wanted to do business, but my chemistry teacher saw me on the block and he said, Hey, you're not going to sign up for chemistry. And he just took a paper and signed it right there and there. So I signed up for chemistry, math and biology instead of account and much economy. So kind of weird. And he would he would have actually like um medicine. I like actual science, so it was kinda of difficult. But he always wanted me to do medicine at that point. And that's how I actually ended up with medicine. Oh, so it wasn't your choice then? So do do, do you regret it? <laughs> Do you regret it any one bit or is there any point in your life where you say, No, I wish I would quit med school, I don't I can't bother with this? 
no. So, actually, during orientation at university, I got to for science because I love math. Right? I didn't got to got to for medicine. Right? And I know the I know the head of actual science and I went to the orientation and he asked me what I really want to do, actual science or medicine. Right? And I told you medicine, right? Because that's what my teacher was geared most to, do, not actual science. They only put it together because I really like math, right? I think I'll be good at it, but then I learned that you need to do economics, you need to do more business to do after a and it was a little difficult. Um, so he actually got into medicine, right? So I never got to work right away. He spoke to the beginning of medicine. It's That's a link thing. Yes, it's a link thing, right? And that's how I got into medicine. Sorry. Okay. Um, Okay. Yes. So after I got in, he posted his screen and I got in. And up to this day, that was that like, yes. Never ever regret that decision not to do after a time because medicine have come to a long distance over the years. Just doing medical school and working as a doctor. Alright, so that brings me to the next question. So what were your expectations, if any, going into med school? Uh, going into med school, I always heard that was really a lot of hard work, right? And I, my expectation was, after all this hard work, after the five years, I'll become a doctor, then I'll meet a lot of money. That was my expectation. That's what I knew coming in, and that was, right? However, after going to medical school, it was difficult. Right? Oh, there's a lot of things that need right? Even after, so after medicine, finish medicine, the results make a lot of money, especially the first couple of years after the If that's the reason why, uh, that's still good reason. So, so why you tell me to so change so my career part then? <laughs> exactly why. You hear that? And I hear that if you're coming for the money, turn back. We're broke over here. We're broke. But guys, my next question for you. Um which year in med school was your most challenging year and why? I thought that was the easiest question, right? Um year one, right? And I think that's probably the hardest year for everyone. Who are making the transition from high school to college, right? right? There's a lot of new things, there's a lot of money to learn, right? But it's just the different thing. Uh, plus, you can get biology, you don't really set you for medicine. You really don't. You learn chemistry, you, have, you learn a lot of principles there, but none of these things go over into medicine. And it's all new, all good, right? Uh, plus, you're doing so much reading. The uh, amount of stuff that you need to know in a semester is just because of that, right? And you never really learn how to cram this information if you start to take time doing IT or how to learn the material. So just trying to learn the material was very difficult. Um, resources were not easy to come by because one you never had, I never had a lot of friends um, initially. So people at the resort never really shared with me. It was good to make friends, good friends um, in medical school. Trust me, as you move on into the medical school, actually get easier. So the same thing you learn from first year. You take it to the second. And when you move from pre clinical career to first two years clinical year, you really don't learn anything other than clinical application of what you learn. Right? They become really easier to find. Right? People just because you have got so much already, you just need to recall it 
and apply. Um, I was going to ask you, Dr. Matthews, I know that you said that year one was a big transition coming from high school, but what about from pre k to k college? Was there like a big jump for a big um, transition between the two? So between pre-clinical and clinical year, um, no, there's not a big transition because they put the in a certain way to try and trans start the transition in pre-clinical year where you have the INT, the introduction to medical practice, they have both one and two, and two is probably the most beneficial where during your clinical rotation, your pre-clinical rotation, you get to go to the ward for um, about eight weeks or so, and you learn about clinical stuff. And the material is not far off, as I said, to be able to apply. Um, the next big jump is from final year and becoming a medical intern. Right? That's the next big jump. So there's two big jumps from high school to pre clinical and from final year to being an actual medical intern, black doctor. Okay. okay. Alright, so I was saying that in med school, um, what course did you like the most and which one did you hate? I mean, you guys will probably know which course I like the most, right? Uh, because I taught you guys anatomy. Um, and that's actually my favorite favorite course from first year until now, right? Uh, because in my post-graduate studies, we have, we have to do anatomy. And it's still my favorite course. The reason is that anatomy, the answer is right here. It is very logical. It is easy. Everything in anatomy is easy. Right? You may have to know a lot of stuff, but it is very logical and it's so far right here in front of you guys. Right? Um, course of that, you do the most, but probably help save money. I think you the second year. You're going to talk about sick vaccine and putting in water. And I suppose that stuff boring. I never really see how it applies to medicine. But uh, it's an environment that's right. Eh? What do you mean? Yeah, you know how many persons have pit latrines and so you, them get sick too? You need to know about it? So I never know why I was doing the second year, but after becoming a doctor and you know, working with the CDF population, the film of the kids get enteritis and foundation from unhealthy practice. It's a white man's Even this pandemic actually show you how important having cleaning and disinfection are those uh, is important. So you should learn it, right? But it was my son for was worried about it. So, okay, my question for you now. I heard you I heard you spoke about postgraduate. You're saying postgraduate study so you have to do anatomy. So what are you doing in postgrad? What's your specialty and so in postgrad? So, I am actually the general surgeon president um, for two hours After being post grad, which is actually the second school, uh, the DM part one and DM part two. At part one level, you're a junior resident, and you want to pass the part one exam, then you're a And then three presidents. Once you pass the part two, you can become a Um. So, to turn on surgery, our part one exam is split up in four. So, physiology that you have to learn in year one of the pre clinical year. Pathology. <laughs> Alright, and anatomy. This is the same stuff that you learn from pre clinical year, just in more detail. Um, so, that's my year, that's my area. Postman is actually it's very difficult. It's harder than undergraduate so you should actually enter a year undergraduate year. Like you don't really get much time to have fun, go home, meet friends. And the reason being is that you have to work and study. And to be in a place in this work at 10 o'clock in the night, 
And my last set of question for you is what advice do you have for people in med school right now? Like year one, two to five, what advice can you give them and what strategies like study strategies can you like tell them to do to be successful through med school? Okay. Um, first of all, I
time. Um, a lot of people don't really like what classes, but there's a lot of classes that they, they have to go. And going to medical school, you have to learn them, type this class again. Not go out to the class and have to But what there is the class, right? So yeah, so some tips to get through medical school. Um, one, well, study group. Not if I mentioned that before already, but you need a good study group. Group of a couple of couple of people, five to not two, not like ten people. Um, because this actually makes studies easier and actually helps you stay away. Um, people are strong, stronger in different areas and you can actually teach the entire group. People will see people falling down or going down the wrong path and able to uh, pull up. That's the importance of a study group. Um, during the clinical year, or even in most of clinical years, I know medicine and immediate more easier is to look at right? You really can't learn uh, medicine, uh, clinical medicine, from wrong You need to be on the ward, be present at water, correct the paper that is history examination, know about the patient, know their results, right? And we read all the patient, right? That's how you get to clinical part of medical school. That's the basic. Be present, crack on the patient, and read their own patient. If you do that, trust me, you learn so much things without like reading like a few of it. Because the patients are there, there's patients. And all the common stuff, common things are common. And you see them on the wall. And those are the people you usually ask you to take down. And similar, similar for MBJ. MBJ is probably like the easiest part of the, the entire five years. Because you have already done five years. You have all the exams. The class of exams are actually easier, harder than the actual MBJ exam. Right? There's just something to know because they have done all of the things. It's just a formality, right? And just to be, you can go and sit down. Um, so that's it for get to medical school. Um, well, internship is an extension of medical school, so we can just talk about that a little bit. Um, internship, this is probably the biggest jump, right? It's bigger than the jump from high school. So medicine. From medicine internship, I'm actual doctor, that's the stuff that you do in medical school, try, I just say, try to steer for what you're going to do in another doctor. But trust me, most of what you learn as a doctor is the internship and the year to come. A lot of things like fighting intravenous active, you learn them in medical school, right? Those two stuff you learn. But a lot of stuff like this in meditation, disease, and those stuff you don't really learn until you actually do it and see that war. There's actually the biggest job. Um, as an intern, one, you have to be present. You have to be there early. Start to work early earlier than the actual team. And that's so when you learn about the patient and you get to learn about the system. Right? You need to be well organized. Because if you are not organized, stuff will get left behind and just you get a lot of customers to stuff get left behind. Because you should know everything on the world about every patient because you're the intern. And if you're not organized, that will be a problem. Right? Um, you don't get past the media. Still, see, it's a time to read a little. Right? Because still, you stay and you learn, and you learn to manage your patient better. That's why you're trying to learn how to be a doctor in intensive. Right? Because after that, you take the right and you decide on your own if something happens. Right? So, you still have to try and read. And most of all, I'm trying this one. Right? Get the lead to an output. I see an internship. It's still a period that you can have fun. You go to your friends, you call your terms, and you day off, and those two things. Right? So, 
this is the most difficult here. Uh, medicine, right? Where you can still have fun. Okay. okay. Alright, all right, thanks so much for that good advice. Okay, we're going to finish up with a little game. Don't worry, don't be too surprised. It's just a never have I ever. So we have like four little questions for you to just tell us that you have or you have not. Okay. 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 Are we number one now, Okay, so the first one is never have I ever given medical advice at a party. <laughs> I am. Okay. If you have, you have to tell us I a little have. about it then. Okay, I mean, people at the party, if party is not going on in any way, they have to stay somewhere. Um, they'll ask the question, right, because of the case and that stuff, no matter where you are. And that's the thing with this profession. The two are kept, never leave, right? If you're out, drunk, check up in the morning, you have to let that stuff, right? So it never leaves. And people will ask the advice. Some people say, like, hey, I'm what I can do. I'm feeling, I'm drunk. They actually want advice. I'm angry. Right? So, yes, I am. I hope you charge them doing because no free service. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure they make you come in the party free of cost for all of that. Anyways. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my next one is for when you were in med school. Never have I ever fallen asleep in class. As I said earlier, there's a lot of classes that I fall asleep in. Um, HNU, that's one. Health services management, that's the other. Um, this is the class that I saw Um Yeah. And a lot, a lot more. I tell people that. What I try to I mean, I wake up with the I learn something, and then drop what of the Shame, shame, shame. Anyway. <laughs> no, I'm not sleeping. I'm just, you know, when you're resting, I'm not sleeping, you know. Just a little rest you need. It's boring, right? Your one. Next one, never have I ever wanted to quit medical school. Um, well, that's never. So, I said, I've never wanted to quit medical school. Just going through the years, I actually get to love it. I have friends who actually like it. And it was quite fun. For, for my mom, it was the most fun time of my 27 years, just going through medical school. After the first year, that's it. I said it, yo. I mean, old. Our very last, last question for you today is why do you love the DNN Medical Series? Okay. I mean, this is a quite easy question, I believe that's the question of the day. Um, the day I end medical field is by my, one of two of my anatomy students, uh, very eager, very enthusiastic uh, medical student. And the content that they put out is really good, clinical stuff that I like to watch. I mean, everything doesn't don't relate to me. Uh, so, and I think students are really good, but stuff that, you know, also go through the students, into the campus life. I really think that is really beneficial to new students coming into medicine or even any faculty. And I think that's good for the students. Um, even their content is not only for medical students. You can actually learn, right? Even that, uh, that one about flattering and farting. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that you can learn from CNN. Uh, please, without being a medical student or a doctor, and I think they're doing quite a wonderful job. Thank you. Keep it up. Actually, look out for this. Can I subscribe to the channel and get get a thing every time you guys post something? You know, I usually take a look at it. 
Right, right. Make sure you let your daughter watch it too. <laughs> right, right. Okay. Yeah, so thank you so much, um, Dr. Mattis, for joining us today for this interview. I'm sure you um, help others and it's beneficial for at least persons in medical school or other people who want to know what medical school is. All right, so thanks for that. And all right, that's it for the video. Remember to like, comment, and share this video. And subscribe if you haven't subscribed as yet. Okay, so that's okay. all for today. So Bye. Again, I'm <laughs>